Hi, Nick Ellis, PC Computer Guy here, and today we're going to be talking about the different types of RAIDs or arrays that can be set up. This is a little bit more techy in nature than most of my tech tips, but the reason why we're doing this is because I had a couple friends that were discussing the different types of uh, RAID setups, and so I wanted to talk about it here, and I thought if I was going to explain it to them, I might as well explain it to everybody. So if it feels a little bit over your head, then don't worry about it, because uh, it's not one of the general tech tips that I normally do, it's just a bit more techy in nature. Um, my name, by the way, is Nick Ellis. I'm the PC Computer Guy, www.pccomputerguy.com for many general tech tips and information about computers and technology in general. Um, you can also find me on Facebook, facebook.com slash PC Computer Guy. So different kinds of arrays that we have or RAID setups. We're gonna, there's, the main ones we're going to discuss is RAID 0, RAID 1, RAID 5, and RAID 10. These are the most common RAID setups that you can have. A RAID is when you take multiple hard drives and you link them together. Your hard drives are obviously where all of your information is stored in your computer. You can link these hard drives together to accomplish different tasks and to have different strengths and weaknesses. So let's start with RAID 0. RAID 0, what it does in the most basic sense, is if we take two hard drives, hard drive 1 and hard drive 2, and what it does is it stripes the information, meaning it splits the information between two drives. Now I'm just going to use simple bits, zeros and ones, pieces of information. So let's say we want to write 0, 1. On a normal hard drive, that 0 and 1 would go onto a single hard drive. But with a RAID 0 setup, that information gets split. So you have the 0 end up here and the 1 end up here. What's the purpose of this? By doing this, you can link multiple hard drives together to amass a single larger hard drive, which is actually what I have in my own personal computer. I have three one terabyte hard drives that are in my computer system. They're all linked together in a RAID 0. And so as far as Windows is concerned, I have a single three terabyte hard drive. So a RAID allows you to link multiple drives together to get a single larger storage space. Also, it allows you to read and write information faster. A single hard drive, let's say, can read um, at 40 megabytes per second. Just throw a number out there. Well, if you take two of them and you link them together, going back and forth between them, essentially what you have is a potential of up to 80 megabytes per second because this one can do 40 and this one can do 40. So by doing that, you increase the amount of information that you can read or write at a single time to your array. This is often used in server environments, by the way. Most of this stuff is actually not for home computers, and it's even more complicated if you have them on home computers because there's certain things that can go wrong and, and that you need to be set up for. So it's not normally for home stuff. But servers often that need performance key over everything else are set up in this type of setup, this RAID 0. There's something that's very important, though. If any one of these hard drives fails, and you can have three hard drives, so let's add a third hard drive, HD3 to represent my system, and we'll put another one over here. So we had three pieces of information and we added another one over here. If any one of these hard drives fails, such as that one, you have lost all of the information. So it's even more critical to back up your computer system with this type of array. Um, and this is how mine is set up. So you know I make absolutely certain that I back up all of the information. So you get the benefits of a single drive with much more space on it and speed, but you also increase the risk that you lose your information. There's a different kind of array, or RAID, and that's RAID 1. The purpose of RAID 1 is to provide redundancy without increased speed or storage. So RAID 1, what it does is you have hard drive 1 and hard drive 2, and if you have this piece of information, 1011, what it does is it writes it over here, 1011, and then it mirrors, that's the key term for RAID 1, the same information over here. The benefits of that is that if this drive fails, you still have all of the information here, and the, the opposite is true. If this one fails, you have all of the information over here. This allows your computer to continue to run if one of the two hard drives fails. Most of the time it allows the con computer to continue to run. Um, and you can remove this hard drive, put in a new hard drive, and then rebuild the information so that you can get the continued redundancy. So this is for a kind of system that needs to be up or available as much as possible, but does not have the high performance needs that we have for the striped array. Um, so pros and cons. Also, if each one of these is a one terabyte hard drive, the total storage space that you will have is only one terabyte because one terabyte will be here and then the mirror or the backup will be the second one terabyte. By the way, in almost all of these situations, it's best just to have hard drives of the same size, otherwise you're gonna have other things to consider. So that's a RAID 1. 
the next kind of a uh, raid we have is the one we're going to spend the most time talking about. That's Raid 5. <clears throat> what Raid 5 does is pretty neat. It tries to take the best of both worlds, uh, the Raid 0 and the Raid 1, and come up with something that gives you the increased speed while not decreasing the reliability like the Raid 0 does. So Raid 5, um, you need a minimum of three hard drives in order for this to work. Anything less than three hard drives and you can't do this. You can have more than three, but not less than three. So we're gonna just keep it simple and do three hard drives. So we'll have hard drive one, hard drive two, and hard drive three. Now, you, let's say each one of these is one terabyte for each of these drives. They're all one terabyte. So in a regular RAID 0, you would have three terabytes of storage space, correct? Right. But in this, you only have two terabytes of storage space because the third hard drive is used as a charity or, or parity or check bit. Now, it's actually not the case that the third one, it's actually distributed among all of them, the parity bits, but we're just going to keep it as simple as possible and pretend like it's all stored in the third one. It's kind of irrelevant to understanding it. So we would have, let's have a, a, an example here. We have piece of data, one zero, that we want to write on these two drives. So we'll write the one here and the zero here because it splits them up similar to a RAID zero. This third hard drive here, what it does is it acts as a sum of all of the other uh, bits that were written. So 1 and 0 in binary equals 1. Let's have a second piece of information. Um, let's do 1 and 1 and that equals in binary 0. And then we'll do the other possible situation 0, 0. So these are all pieces of information being written to hard drive 1 and hard drive 2 in that increased speed. The th 0 plus 0 is going to be 0. So why do we do this? Well, what we have is if any one of these hard drives fails, it can be any hard drive. So let's pick one, any, mini, mini, mo, this guy, okay? So I'll say that this guy failed. Hard drive two has died. The computer continue, can continue to operate even if one of the hard drives fails. Well, you might say, how is that possible? Our information is gone. The information itself is gone, but the, uh, what we can abstract from it isn't. If hard drive two is gone, the computer can calculate, or the RAID controller can calculate, hard drive one had a piece of one, or had a bit of one, and the check was one. So that must mean that this hard drive had a zero there, because if it was a one, then this would have been zero as the check sum. Uh, counting in binary, if, you, if you're not understanding this part, look up counting in binary. It's a little out of the scope of this, but. So, since we had a 1 over here, we can abstract that this was a 0. Same thing here. This was a 1, and this is a 0. And so, if this is a 1 and this is a 0, this must have been a 1. Because 1 and 1 rolls over to 0 in binary. And the same thing here. We have a 0 here and a 0 here, so this must have been a 0. You see, if it was a 1, 0 plus 1 would have been 1. So it can't have been 1. So, what the array, the RAID controller can do is calculate what the information used to be and it does that on the fly in most systems so that even if one of the hard drives fails you will continue to operate now you do pay a price for that all that calculation slows down the the read and write of the computer and potentially does it significantly so you definitely want to get that hard drive replaced but the business will continue to function or the information that you need from the computer will still be retrievable if one of the drives fails so while you have reduced the total amount of storage that you can have among them, you also have some redundancy in place so that any one of them can fail and the information can continue. The really neat thing is if this hard drive fails, you pull it out, you put in a new hard drive too, and in most controllers, it automatically rebuilds the information and once the information is rebuilt, you're back to full speed again. So, I mean, it's pretty sweet. The same thing is true if you have four drives, five drives, it's the exact same principle. You just do the math and you figure out what piece of information is gone. Now, if you notice that requires to do this, you can see now why it requires three and no less than three. But here's the thing. If two of the drives fail at the same time, you've lost all the information. So again, even though you have something like this, you should back up. That's one of my key principles, good antivirus and backing up. So it's still possible to lose the information if two drives fail at the same time, but it's not very likely. So you're going to get the reliability of your system being up almost always and the speed increase of writing the information between these two. Um, it does have to do the math every time in order to calculate the parity. So that does slow things down a little bit, but it's still faster than a single drive working by itself. 
And then the last one, there's RAID 6, which allows for, it's basically the same thing, just a more glorified version of it, more check bits that allow two drives to fail without losing the information. But you also sacrifice the amount of storage even more. The last kind that we're gonna talk about is 10. And we're only gonna talk about it briefly. It's a little bit complicated. It's just easier if you see a graph, but I'll try to draw it out here. RAID 10, what it tries to do is it links uh, RAID 0 and RAID 1 together. So remember, RAID 0 stripes the information, which means that it um, splits it up for speed, sp speed sake. So your 0 and 1, 1, 0, just goes back and forth between the two drives. But instead of going to a drive here like we did in the first picture, it actually goes to another RAID. So here you have RAID 0 that's striping the information between these two spots, but here you have a RAID uh, 1, and here you have a RAID 1 which if you remember, are the mirrored arrays. So you have, we'll say four hard drives, hard drive one, and then you have a mirror of hard drive one over here, and you have hard drive two, and a mirror of hard drive two. So there's four physical hard drives here, and the information from this RAID is being written back and forth between the two, so you get the speed of that, and then this is being mirrored to this one, so that if this drive fails, it has the information here, and the flip side is true, same thing over here. So what do I mean by that? If we have zero and one being written in the simplest terms, <clears throat> what will happen is the RAID zero will split the zero so that it goes this way. So the zero comes over here and it takes the one and puts it over here. So it's splitting the information back and forth for the speed. The RAID, zero, the RAID one over here is making a mirror of it. So this copies over to here and this one copies over, that's a one right there. This copies over to here. So that's the RAID 1 mirroring the two drives. So you see you get kind of the best of both worlds, but, it, but you do have, you sacrifice something from this too. Here we have four hard drives. Let's say each one of those hard drives is one terabyte. So we have one, two, three, four, four potential terabytes of storage, but really you will only be able to use two terabytes because each one of these mirrors takes away half of that. So over here you have two terabytes between the two, and over here you have two terabytes, but split it in half because it's mirrored. So you only have two te one terabyte useful over here, one terabyte useful over here, combined together to show you two terabytes of information. So with this kind of setup, you could have one or even possibly two hard drives fail, and everything can continue to work at full speed. Whereas RAID 5, it would continue to work but be slower. This will continue to work at full speed, so long as you don't have a catastrophic failure of two of these, and, and I'll show you. <clears throat> Over here, we can have this one fail, and we can have, and then everything will continue to work because it'll be able to pull all the information that it needs from here and get the equivalent back and forth. So it'll still be able to do this back and forth thing right here. And if this one fails, it'll still be able to do the back and forth that it does from RAID because it still has all the information that it needs from this drive and this drive. So you can see it, one drive can fail, or two drives can fail and things can continue to operate. But let's say that this one is still okay. So there are situations where two drives can fail and you lose all your information. So this is hard drive two, hard drive two. Well, this one, so these two, let's fear our hypo hypothesize are working right now. And this one right here, hypothetically speaking, sorry. This one right here has failed. Well, if this one fails, now you have two drives failed. Remember before two drives failed and you were okay. But here two drives failed and now you have lost this entire side, so that means you've lost all of this data and it's not possible to recover the information anymore. The hard drive is completely crashed because that's the way that this array is set up without getting into more technical terms. So that's RAID 0, RAID 1, RAID 5, and RAID 10. Those are the most common arrays. RAID 0 stripes the information, does the back and forth. RAID 1 does a mirror, so you get the redundancy, but half of the um, space and half of the speed as compared to the RAID 0. The RAID 5 tries to mash those together and do some mathematics. So if you have three hard drives that are each one terabyte, you will have two terabytes of storage and one terabyte of check information so that it can rebuild if anything happens. And um, this one right here kind of just merges RAID 0 and RAID 1 together. Hopefully this helps. My name is Nick Ellis. I'm the PC Computer Guy here in Indianapolis. 317-883-7224. That's 883 PCCG if you need help and you're in the local Indianapolis area. Um, or if you need more tech tips and stuff, we have all of that information available on our website, www.pccomputerguy.com. They're normally not this technical in nature. Um, this is just a discussion between friends that I thought I'd make available to everybody else. So thank you very much, and until next time, have a good one.